This is three steps to sketch for the basic tangent graph, y equals negative tangent of x over 3. All right, a quick summary of our three steps. First, we'll find the essentials to get everything set up. Second, we'll plot our key points in the pattern, point, point, asymptote, point. We'll sketch out that cycle, and then we'll repeat for as many cycles as we want. Now, one important thing to notice before we even get started with this one is the negative out front. Remember, a negative in front of the major parent function just signifies that you have a reflection. So in this case, it's a vertical reflection or it reflects vertically over the X axis. So we know our normal tangent graph has this general shape. So a reflection is simply going to take that and turn it upside down. So we should just expect to flip our pattern and we'll have a graph that looks more like the green one than the blue one, which mimics the parent graph. All right, so with that note, we can get started and you might even just circle that negative so you remember okay I just need to flip my pattern in the second step or you could put a star just make some kind of note for yourself okay so now that we've made that note about the vertical reflection and the inverted pattern or the vertically reflected pattern let's get started so notice that our coefficient in front of tangent our, our value for a is negative 1 that's another way you can recognize or make a note of that vertical reflection. And then to identify B, let's rewrite this tangent equation so that it's one third times X. That's the same thing as X over three. It's just much more clear to see, okay, one third is our coefficient of X. All right, so now we can calculate the period. Remember for tangent, it's always pi divided by B. So in this case, we have pi divided by one third, or you could say pi times the reciprocal times three over one. So our period here is just three pi. Okay, now we can find our scale labels. Remember to set the horizontal scale, we wanna take the period, which is just the length of a horizontal cycle and divide it into four equal pieces. So in this case, three pi divided by four will be what we count by to label the tick marks of our horizontal scale. And then our vertical scale labels are determined by A. A is negative one, so we just take the absolute value of that and we'll count by ones for our vertical axis labels. All right, and finally our asymptotes. Remember, this is the equation to find your asymptotes. So pi over 2b plus pi over bk where k is an integer. So we simply substitute in b here. Okay, so you might want to just come down and have a little bit of scratch. So we have pi over two times b is one third. So you have pi over two thirds, or that's the same thing as pi times three halves. Okay, so three pi over two is going to be the first part of that asymptotes equation. 3 pi over 2, and then we have plus pi over bk. Remember, we know that this part should simply be the period, so we're expecting plus 3k. So let's make sure that that's what happens. We have pi over our b, which is 1 third. So you see it's pi divided by 1 third. Well, we did that calculation previously for the period. So we have plus 3 pi k. k belongs to the set of all integers. Remember, that's just the shorthand for writing out k is an integer. All right, so from here, we're ready to label our axes. And remember that our fourth horizontal tick mark should end up being the period if we've counted everything correctly. And we know our second tick mark should be the asymptote where k is zero. So we should be expecting our second tick mark to be labeled three pi over two. All right, so let's go to the horizontal axis. We're labeling by three pi over four. So I like to count three fourths pi, six fourths pi, which reduces, as we said, three pi over two. So we're on the right track. So we have three fourths, six fourths, nine fourths pi. We're just adding three fourths pi every time. 
and then we have 12 fourths pi, which reduces to three pi. All right, so we feel comfortable. We hit our benchmarks. That second tick mark matches what we got for our asymptotes equation. The fourth tick mark matches our period. So we can now label in the opposite direction. So we have negative three pi over four, negative three pi over two, negative nine pi over four, and negative three pi. All right, and now finally we can label our vertical axis. So just counting by ones. All right, now we're ready to plot our key points. Remember our pattern is point, point, asymptote, point. And don't forget you made your note, maybe you even had a star right here, to remind yourself that the pattern will just be flipped upside down. So we'll still start at the same place since this is still a basic unshifted tangent graph. So our first point in the pattern is at zero, zero. But this time, instead of moving over to the horizontal tick mark and going up to one, you'll see that we'll move our x coordinate for our second point will be three pi over four, and our y coordinate will be negative one. Now, if you had just stuck with, we know it's going to be the first tick mark, and then the value of a is the y coordinate, you would see, well, hey, our value of a is negative one. So it accomplishes the same thing, but it is nice to recognize that that negative out front is causing a vertical reflection. Okay, so we have our pattern, point, point, vertical asymptote at three pi over two, point at nine pi over four, comma, the opposite of A. And so it's that flipped or reflected graph. All right, we're on to step three, sketch and repeat. And notice I went ahead and put a point at three pi comma zero, just to help me sketch a nice complete graph so here's one cycle, and we can repeat this pattern now to the right and to the left to get as many cycles as we want. So let's just do one more, and we're going to move four tick marks to the left of where we have left off of our sketch. So we'll have point, point, asymptote, point. Okay, so you see we've mimicked the pattern that we had already set, and we'll sketch that in. And great, we've got it. If you wanted to find this asymptote, the one at negative three pi over two using your asymptotes equation, all you would need to do is let k be negative one. So let's take a quick look at that just to make sure we really understand this asymptotes equation. So we have the one at three pi over two. And if we let k be negative one, that's simply moving it one length of a period to the left. So we have three pi over two minus three pi. And instead of writing that, let's do it as a common denominator. So minus six pi over two, that's the same thing as three pi. And you can see that will simplify to give us negative three pi over two, which is the location of that asymptote. All right, so that was three steps to get a great graph of y equals negative tangent of x over three.